you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on everyone? Welcome to Week in Recap on the Courtside Financial Podcast, a segment where we bring you a compilation of everything that went down throughout the week from a story's perspective. Before we get into this video, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and click the notification bell icon so you don't miss out on any content that's coming in the future. Our first topic discusses um, a question that a lot of people might be having with Neo having these new um, partnerships around their battery swapping technology with companies like Changin Automotive. So why are all these companies delving into battery development? Some say it's to combat the rising cost of price wars in the automotive sector, but there's definitely more to it than just economics. Building their battery expertise allows companies to influence the future of battery technology. This gives them a stronger hand in their collaboration. This move might not only lead to cost reductions, but it could also birth a new business model where batteries are supplied to other manufacturers. Take for example GAC's Intelligent Battery Factory. Here is where the P58 Super Battery was first unveiled. This battery has some pretty interesting specs with a density of 195 watts per kilogram and a cruising range of over 700 kilometers. It's evident that these companies are pushing the boundaries of battery innovation. This isn't even just about cars, it's about the future of energy storage. Chang'an, for instance, is eyeing a capacity of no less than 150 gigawatt hours by 2030. They're exploring various technologies from liquid to semi-solid and solid state batteries. The competition is fierce and the stakes are high. So what impact could this influx of car companies into the battery field have on the industry? Despite their growing involvement, companies that traditionally make batteries still have control. The key is collaboration. Car companies and battery manufacturing companies are leveraging each other's strengths. According to the deputy of the Industry of Things Industry Alliance, collaboration can lead to reduced cost, increased supply, and ultimately more affordable vehicles. It's a symbiotic relationship. Car companies can benefit from cost reductions, while battery manufacturers gain access to a broader market. The future might just see a diversified landscape with multiple players, and that's going to prevent the monopolization of the industry. Moving on to our second topic is NEO's battery buyout option. NEO is once again breaking new ground, allowing Chinese car owners to buy out battery packs that are being essentially leased on battery as a service after one year of service. This move by NEO adds a layer of flexibility for owners. With the option to buy out the battery pack, customers can gain more control over their EV's power source. However, the timing is crucial especially considering China's new energy vehicle uh, tax incentives. NEO seems to be strategically aligning its offerings with government policy. In turn, this benefits consumers and the company. And now our final topic is NEO's impressive delivery figures. NEO has exceeded its Q4 guidance delivering 50,045 vehicles. This showcases a strong rebound for December. These numbers are impressive, but they also signify the growing competition in the EV market. Neo, Xpong, and Li Auto are not just delivering cars, but they're shaping the future of electric mobility as well. The competition is pushing these companies to innovate and deliver exceptional vehicles, ultimately further benefiting consumers. Our first um, topic takes us into the financial realm of NEO, the Chinese electric vehicle juggernaut. NEO has issued a repurchase right for its senior convertible notes due in 2026. Now, if you're not familiar with convertible notes, they're like a financial chameleon, allowing its holders to turn them into shares over time. As of January 2nd, NEO had over $301 million in convertible notes. And so NEO is giving note holders the chance to exercise those notes from January 3rd to January 31st. If all notes are not surrendered, we're looking at a cash purchase of $301,448 million. It's a bold move considering that in 2022, NEO's um, attempt that was similar to this saw no takers. 
Now this financial maneuver follows re Neo's recent $2.2 billion cash infusion from Abu Dhabi. It's a solid reminder that even in the ever evolving EV landscape, financial maneuvers still have their place. Keep an eye on this everyone, we'll see how it unfolds. Moving on to our next topic, let's talk about the pulse of China's electric vehicle market. Last week, NIO, Tesla, Xpong, and Li Auto battled it out. Li Auto with 14,100 registrations marked a 16.53% increase from the previous week. Meanwhile, NIO, Xpong, and Tesla registered 5,700, 4,800, and 15,800 vehicles respectively. Numbers like these give us a peek into the competitive landscape. Lee Auto's surge in registrations aligns with their record breaking 50,353 deliveries in December. It's a race where every registration counts, reflecting the intense rivalry among these electric titans. Lastly, let's delve into Neo's product lineup and their delivery dynamics. Four out of Neo's eight models have now uh, been granted shorter wait times. With the ET5, the ET5 Touring, the EC7, and the ES8 going from three to four weeks to two to three weeks. It's a subtle but significant adjustment in customer expectation. Now, my opinion here is that shorter wait times can definitely be a game changer when it comes to customer satisfaction. It reflects not only production efficiency, but the growing demand for Neo's vehicles. The unveiling of the ET9 adds an exciting layer to this narrative, promising future market anticipation. Now everyone, let's get straight into the numbers. As of January 4th, 2024, 6.58 p.m., Neo's stock is clocking $8.27, a 2.71% dip on the day. But hold on to your hats because the plot thickens. Why did the stocks of Chinese uh, new energy vehicle all-stars like BYD, Xpong, Li Auto, Tesla, Neo, take a nosedive in the first trading days of 2024? In December 2023, the Chinese electric vehicle market reached new heights. Neo, not to be outdone, cruised past its previous records, delivering a whopping 18,012 vehicles. Xpong and Li Auto also revved up their engines, showcasing uh, some impressive growth. But here's a kicker. On January 2nd, which was two days ago, these stocks had all dropped, almost as if it was a fire sale. A classic case of selling the news, they say. Well, why? Some speculate that after a year-end rally, investors think that it's time to cash out the chips and secure a little bit of profit. Now let's talk numbers here. Neo's December delivery numbers surged, totaling almost 160,000 vehicles for 2023. That's a 31% year-over-year increase. Xpong and Li Auto also had some pretty impressive numbers. These are growth percentages that might make someone's head spin. City analyst Jeff Chung is saying that the Chinese electric vehicle market outperformed expectations. Positive news, right? Well, not really if you were looking at the stock price over these last few days. BYD, Li Auto, Neo, Xpong all saw their share price do a little dance in the red. Even Tesla joined the party with a small with a small drop in their share price. What gives? Market vibes, my friends. The S&P 500 index and the Nasdaq are both down this week. The Nasdaq is down a little over 4% for the week. And the S&P 500 is down a little bit over 2% for the week. Now here's the kicker. Um, as of today, January 4th, over the past month, NEO's stock is still up 11%. And Tesla's stock is pretty flat for um, the one month chart. Tesla, BYD, and Li Auto all decided to be rebels taking, a little, taking close to a 9% dip over the week. Despite the roller coaster that we're seeing right now, one thing's clear. Chinese electric vehicle deliveries laid a solid foundation for the year ahead. And speaking of deliveries for the year ahead, Tesla announced its um, fourth quarter deliveries on January 2nd, but held back on monthly data. What's the story there? Well, that's a cliffhanger for another day for another episode. So 2023 has um, set the foundation for 2024 to be the year of electric vehicles. But forget about sleek designs and autopilot features, we're talking about one of the most expensive parts of an electric vehicle, which is the battery. The competition is heating up and it's not just about who can go the furthest, but who can recharge the fastest. 
Recently, Neo, Ion, and Jai Krypton have all released their own self-developed batteries. These companies are reigniting the battle for energy supremacy. And it's not just talk anymore, these batteries have reached mass production. Neo's 46105 battery has stolen the spotlight with the uh, ability to replenish 255 kilometers of range in just a mere 5 minutes. But Neo's not alone, Gak Ion and Jai Krypton are in the game as well. They released their own uh, power pack solutions and it's like Christmas is not really over just yet. It's not just these three though. Changan, Cherry, and a parade of, ele of electric vehicle makers are joining the party as well, joining in on the race of self-developed batteries. Seems like everyone wants a piece of the energy pie and who can really blame them? With more than 10 domestic car companies in the mix, the landscape is evolving from zero to one at a lightning speed. Now let's shift gears and ponder a fundamental question. How important is the battery? According to Ann Cogway, president of Geely Holding Group and CEO of Jai Krypton Intelligent Technology, the battery is not just crucial, it's the foundation of electric vehicles. It's not only about range and performance, but also safety and overall experience. And the plot thickens as we know car makers are vying for not just supremacy, but they're also vying for safety, performance, and brand recognition. As technologies advance, batteries are becoming more than just energy storage. They're integral to the structural design of electric vehicles. And what I mean by that is that they're influencing interiors, things like interior space, and even brand loyalty. As we peel back the layers of innovation, it's clear that the battery goes beyond just energy density. High voltage, fast charging solutions are becoming a battleground for many of the competitors in the market. It's not just about how far you can go, but how quickly you can get the capacity to go far. But let's not forget about the safety dance. Neo's founder and CEO, Lee Bin, boasts seven levels of safety redundancy in the ET9. With the new thermoelectric separation designs and intelligent algorithms, electric vehicles are breaking grounds in safety measures, some which were unimaginable in the era of internal combustion engines. Now let's talk Tesla. The pioneer in the electric vehicle space has set the tone, but as they struggle with mass production of their 4680 batteries, other automakers are eyeing the opportunity. Great Wall Motors, Neo, BYD, and even Leap Motors are flexing their muscles making strides in battery self-sufficiency. But, and it's a big but, the road to true battery freedom is paved with several challenges. Tesla's hurdles with the 4680 battery are showing that even giants face production challenges. And it's not just Tesla to be fair, Neo's facing their own uh, production challenges as well with their solid state battery. Song Yining from Leap Motors sums it up pretty nicely. He says that battery development is no cakewalk. While self-developed batteries promise a cost reduction, the journey is far from smooth. The battery cell and chip, the yin and yang, of the electric vehicle world presents its, present their own unique challenges that may require collaboration rather than competition. So as we wrap up this interesting episode, remember that the battery, the battle for self-developed batteries is on. Ion, Jai Krypton, Neo, and a legion of others are striving for a piece of this electric future. Will automakers actually achieve true battery freedom independent independence from uh, traditional battery manufacturers, only time will tell. That's gonna be it for this episode of Week in Recap for the Courtside Financial Podcast. If you found any of this information valuable, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and definitely leave a comment down below. Genuinely interested in hearing what you guys think about these new, uh, this new style of videos that we're doing. Anyways, that's gonna be it. I'll catch you guys next time.